All right, y'all, I am working on turnip greens. Lee just brought me in a bunch of turnip greens from the garden. And um, so, here I am cleaning them. I'm going to can some. And um, I actually had someone ask about cooking turnip greens. So, I thought I would just go ahead and do a turnip green video. So, first off, um, I'm washing these. These are young, uh, of course. Um, turnip greens is a cool weather crop, so you can have them in the um, you can have them in the early spring or late fall, <clears throat> and they will keep going until well, <laughs> till you're done with them, uh, because the cold does not bother them. And actually, the uh, frost is good for them. So they actually taste better after you've had a frost. They seem to be sweeter. And uh, so I like them after we've had a frost. We did have a light frost. I had rather uh, wait until we had a bigger frost. But we're going to have so many that I'm not going to be able to do them all then. So we have to start on them now, or I won't get them all um, done. <laughs> uh, so I take off the biggest, I'm washing them as I go, taking off the biggest stems. I don't like to have those great big stems in there. Little stems like that, I don't mind. <clears throat> but I will take off most of the bigger stems as I'm washing. These um, are young and tender. So they're really good, and uh, I don't have to worry about too many bugs or spots or anything like that because they're still really young and tender. So I'm just rinsing them first and taking off the stems. And then I will go back through. After I do this step, I will go back through and rinse them again and go back to the other sink. So getting off the big stems. And um, I'm just going through and doing that and getting them over here. I've got two bags full. Uh, turnip greens will cook down quite a bit. So two bags full won't make a whole lot. Um, so I'm going to make this my first batch. I'll probably wait and do another batch after we have a little bit more of a frost. Because like I said, turnip greens taste a little better after you've had a frost. We did have a light frost, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to do this batch and then wait for another frost to do more. They will last until, uh, I mean, the snow doesn't even really bother them. And we will wait for some turnips. So it'll take a little while. Uh, Lee said that some of the turnips was starting to form pretty good. So we will wait and do more after we have some turnips. Because I like turnips in mine. Lee kind of, he doesn't eat the turnip, so, you know. So, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, um, <clears throat> I bake turnip greens all my life. So, uh, I remember, um, I grew up in Hickman County, Kentucky. And, um, when I was young, we used to go, um, the farmers, a lot of the farmers, would um, plant turnip greens after they got their crops out in the fall they would go ahead and plant turnips and um, <clears throat> they would allow all the you know county folk to go and pick them after they got ready uh, late in the fall I remember going when it was cold and we would pick turnip greens and there was so many that there would be people out there from around the county um, picking these turnip greens. And the farmers didn't mind. They'd done it to help the county out and also to, uh, to uh, enrich their soil. Uh, so it helped both the county and the farmers. And um, that was every year. Every year, as long as I can really remember down there, they may still do it. I live two counties over now, and I don't really know of anybody in this county that does that. Um, they may. They may. I just may not know. 
Um, so we plant some every year, mainly plant some. And that's a little story about early on uh, eating turnip greens and turnips um, growing up. And we always had to have cornbread with it. And so, <clears throat> so um, you know, I'm on a low carb diet and not supposed to have cornbread. So, um, so it just hurts my soul <laughs> to eat turnips without cornbread, but uh, that's what I've been doing. Uh, Lee don't like cornbread, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I can't imagine. Can you imagine anyone that don't like cornbread? But um, he don't like cornbread, so he just eats the turnips like they are, uh, puts some vinegar on them, and um, it just kills me. I love cornbread with my turnips and turnip greens, collard greens, any greens, cabbage, um, any of that kind of thing, beans, I like to have cornbread with. So anyway, I'm gonna get this finished up and come back. I got me a big old pan uh, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna blanch them before I can them. Uh, I will cook some, I'll show how to cook some, but for canning these, I will be blanching them and then canning them. Now on my second wash, I'm going to go through, and these little bitty fresh ones are fine. Um, all of these are young and tender, so I'm not going to worry too much about de-stemming. I took the big stems off, but uh, if, if these were a little older, I would take more of the stem off. And I'll show you that. Let's see, let me get a big one. Okay, so here's a big one. I'm just rinsing these and putting them in the pan. Okay, so here's a big one. Now, if these were a little older, I would worry more about that stem. I took the stem off, but I would de-stem this. Like great big ones like that, I would de-stem. Or if they were older, I would do that on a lot of them because they would be tougher. And so one thing you're gonna do when you're doing this second, when you're doing this second rinse, rinse them real good off in that sink and you're gonna break them up a, couple, a little bit. I break them up a little bit. You don't have to, you don't have to do this step. I do it because I like them a little smaller. So I'm not gonna worry about that with most of these. As you can see, most of these are pretty young and tender. Those stems will go to the rabbits or the compost. In this case, they're gonna go to the rabbits. The rabbits will have a heyday on that. Um, so, anyway, so there's another big one. I'm probably going to just take a little bit of that big stem off. There you go. Okay, so i got a big old pan full of these ready. I'm fixing to start blanching them. And uh, so I filled this up with water almost all the way. And I'm going to put them on the stove and get them uh, heating up. They will... Um, they will really cook down to um, to nothing, but I'm not doing that canning them. Since I'm going to be canning them, I'm just going to blanch them. So I'm going to uh, heat them up and let them like a, a simmer, uh, a low boil for about five minutes. And uh, I'll put a little bit to the side to cook to show how to cook them but most of these are going to be canning so uh and you just can them like you do anything else i'll kind of maybe explain that a little but the question was how to cook them so we're going to cook some too all right <clears throat> we're on a low simmer here and it won't take long but do you see how much they have already cooked down they need to go just a little bit longer They've been on a low simmer for probably mm, almost five minutes, maybe at the most. <clears throat> but you see how far they cooked down? This was all the way to the top. And now it's uh, about half, a little more than half. So they cook way down. That's one reason you want to blanch them is because they cook down so much <clears throat> that if you packed them in your jars and then canned them, you would end up with probably half a jar of turnip greens. So you blanch them first to get them cooked down so that when you pack them in the jars, they don't cook down too much more. Now, when I put these in the jars, I'll use some salt. I'll use, uh, I'm doing, 
quart. So I'll use a uh, I'll use a teaspoon of uh, salt. I use I don't use cannon salt. I use uh, uh, pink sea salt. You you can use Celtic salt or any kind of sea salt or Raymond's um, Redmond's real salt. I love Redmond's real salt, but I don't have any right now. I'm using pink sea salt. So whatever you have um, that's not iodized, you know that. Whatever salt you have that's not iodized, uh, you can use. So I'll put some salt in there, and I usually put a piece of bacon. I think I have some bacon, and if I do, I'll put a piece of bacon in the bottom and not tell Lee, because he doesn't like that. He says it makes it greasy. I do it anyway, and he usually doesn't notice or say too much. Okay, so I took that off the stove. I'm gonna fill that in the jars, that that has been blanched. Meanwhile, I started some over here that we're gonna cook for tonight. I moved this aside and I'm gonna get my jars over here and start filling my jars with my salt, my piece of bacon, and my turnips, uh, turnip greens, and uh, get that started canning. So that's what I do to it and I, I will can, uh, I will do a pressure can. You need to pressure can turnip greens. Now for all you folks like Mr. Willie, who feel sorry for Lee, <laughs> I did put bacon in the bottom and Lee doesn't like that, but but we eat on Wednesday nights at my church. These will go to church. So Lee doesn't have to eat these because he doesn't go on Wednesday nights. Shame on him. He doesn't go on Wednesday nights and eat with us. And sometimes I take turnip greens to Wednesday night church service, depending on what we're having. Uh, if we're having fried chicken, I definitely would take turnip greens. And so, these will go to church. So, you don't have to feel sorry for Lee because I put bacon in his uh, food and he doesn't like it in there like that. So, I'm just going to fill these jars up real good. I don't know if it'll fill five. I got five ready. I don't know if it'll fill five. I feel like it probably won't. Like I said, they cook way down. Um, I could have done pints. A lot of times for me and Lee, I'll just do pints. But these are going to church, so I will need more anyway. So let's see. That looks good. Now I need a little juice in there. I'll fill the rest of that up with this water from this. And that will be ready to can. And I think this, yeah, is probably going to make, I'm guessing, three quarts. Maybe it'll make four, I'm going to hope. All right, I'm going to go through this process real quick, too. Uh, getting these ready for canning. I had four quarts. <laughs> Almost said pints. And take a paper towel, wipe off those jars. Just going to go through this process. A lot of people know how to can, but just in case, you get your warm, um, hot jar lids and um, rings on there. Wipe those off. Put on your hot jar lids. Uh, this is hot liquid in here, so I'm getting this heated up to about the same temperature. So... Those will have to sit just a minute. Let me crank that on up and get this about the same temperature as my contents here. And uh, meanwhile, I am cooking down these turnip greens over here. And when they get, um, I just cook them down until they get, um, you know, really um, cooked down as far as they're gonna go. And then I will add some bacon and uh, some bacon ends. I just have some little bacon end pieces. I'll put some of those in there and some salt and pepper and, um, and, and cook it for a little while. It needs to cook for a good hour to be good and tender. Maybe not quite an hour. You'll know when they get good and tender, you can, you know, test them now and then. And uh, when they get, good and tender, 
um, and then they're about ready and I'll uh, I usually add just a little bit of sugar just a little um, I don't know measurements here but I'm just gonna say probably a teaspoon or so of sugar I don't like mine sweet a lot of people do and they will add more sugar sweet is for desserts in my opinion but i do add just a little it brings out the flavor like a lot of other things that i cook i'll add just a little sugar just to it just gives it a kick and brings out a certain flavor uh, like um, i do that with pimento cheese homemade pimento cheese and slaw and um, you know certain things that a little bit of sugar just a little uh, kind of just brings out a, a good flavor in there. I didn't do that canning. I would wait and do that when I cook them. So after, that's why after these get completely cooked and I'm gonna, like I said, add my uh, few bacon ends and some salt and pepper, a dash, a pinch of salt and pepper. And uh, sometimes I have added um, a bouillon cube, a chicken bouillon cube is good in there. Um, that's it. That's what I do. And I love to have some, uh, cut up, uh, diced up turnips in mine, but Lee don't like that. Um, okay. These are about to go in now. And one more thing, um, these will be done. You won't have to cook these long after they've been canned because the canning process will cook that. And so then when I open a jar of these, I don't have to cook that long at all. It's these fresh ones over here that have to be cooked a good long time. Um, so these that I'm putting in here, when they come out, they will be cooked and uh, go on the shelf. And then when I open them, I just open them up and uh, heat them up, maybe add a little more salt and uh, maybe a bouillon cube and a little sugar and delicious so uh, so when i get this wrapped up i will come back all right i might as well continue on with this canning lesson <laughs> so it's starting to steam so it's time to put the lid on so you have an arrow there it shows you where to lock that lid in there you go now this will start steaming this is this over here steaming uh, this will start steaming out this little open nozzle, this little open hole here. Whoop. It'll start steaming out. You need to let that steam out good. They say 10 minutes. I do about five or six. Then you put your weight on there after that steams for a little bit. So um, that's where we're at right now. So I have it on seven, um, which is pretty hot for my stove i'll put it on seven until it starts steaming and then i'll start cutting back just a little and my stove cooks hot so uh, i'll have to cut that back and cut that back after it uh after i put the weight on and it reaches 10 um i'll have to keep cutting that back to keep it to stay on 10. i have to cut mine all the way back to like two to keep it uh from going over 10. All right, that steam's been rolling good out of there for a good five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and put this on. This over here is steaming up too. So I'm going to put it on. And then I'm going to watch the, uh, that'll pop up. And then I'm going to watch my eye, my gauge, until it gets on 10. Before it gets to 10, I'll have to start cutting that back. Because like I said, my stove goes hot. So I'll have to start cutting that back, back, back on mine until it gets up to the 10 and I can kind of keep it there. I know my stove, so I know that once it gets to 10, uh, I'm going to cut back a little at, at a time till I get to 2. And at 2, it will hold. Alright, it's already on 10. It went pretty fast which uh, usually don't go that fast, but I think everything was in there was so hot already. So I've turned it way down. I went ahead and turned it to two. You need to turn it down slowly 
so you're not suddenly doing uh, that. But um, but it did get up fast on me, so I went ahead and turned it down to two from uh, four. I had it on four and went ahead and cut down to two because it's going pretty fast here. All right, this is done. I'm fixing to pull these out of here. Um, I let that cool down for 10 minutes. Uh, after it got all the way down to zero again, um, then I let it sit for about 10 minutes. I took the um, weight off and let it sit 10 minutes. Now I'm gonna pull them out of there with our little handy dandy tool because they are very, very hot. So we're just gonna pull them out of there and set them on a towel. My grandma always said set them on a towel and cover them up so they didn't cool down too fast. That was her reasoning for setting them on a towel and covering them up so they don't cool down too fast. And I'm gonna finish this up. So let's see if I can bring you over this way. All right, these are done and tender. All right, whoops. Okay, I had done turned them off, so uh, they were done, and I turned them off. So I'm gonna turn them back on and get them heating again. And then I'm gonna taste of them and get my salt right, see how much salt I need, and that little dash of sugar. Here, I didn't cook a big old pan full, so I'm just gonna do like a little sprinkle of sugar. Just a little sprinkle, all right? And I use, uh, I don't use the white sugar. I use uh, the uh, organic raw sugar, you know. Uh, so I'm gonna heat that back up now. Now, I add a little vinegar, and Lee always adds more vinegar when he gets it on his plate. So <laughs> no matter how much vinegar I add, he adds more once it's on his plate. So I'm just gonna splash some vinegar in here all right, and then as soon as it's heated up, I'm gonna start taste testing to see if it's right or if I need a little more of something. All right, I'm getting just a little piece here to try that out and see if it needs anything else. It's pretty good. So there you go, there's how you make turnip greens how I can turn up greens, and it's delicious. All I need is a little cornbread, but I don't have that. I'm not gonna make that, because I'm trying to be good on my diet. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, a comment, and subscribe.